Hey guys, it's JT Tran, USA's number one Asian dating coach. And today I have a very special guest. As you can see, we have the lovely Brooke. And today's topic is really special because I've had in the past 10 years, like thousands of Asian men as my clients. And they come in wanting to get a girlfriend, they get the girlfriend, and you know what happens over you know successful period of 10 years, a thousand students? They started getting married. They start having kids. So I brought on Brooke, uh, who's a friend of mine, and she is raising her own half Asian son, right? You, your uh, partner is Chinese, correct? Yes, Taiwanese specifically. Ta Taiwanese. Um, <laughs> And so there are a, a lot of things that go on, I'm sure, that when you, you know, decided to start a family together where you are Latina, but you are white passing, right? Very, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you have a son or any child that is going to be just like half Asian, and in your mm -hmm. case, like Zozo, your son, at least as a baby, looks, you know, pretty Asian, um, there are certain... There are certain sort of um, things you have to consider raising a son. Like, what was going through your mind as you, you know, decided to become a parent and raise this child together? Uh, I guess number one with, uh, I, I was lucky um, because with Randy, he um, he didn't have so much of that, that issue growing up, um, the stigma against him. He wasn't really bullied that much. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, you know, we did think about like, say Zozo isn't as, you know, mentally strong as, as Randy, you know, everybody's different and that there would be some obstacles that we would need to, um, to get over. And my biggest concern was just, um, the bullying from the Chinese community as well as, you know, the never being white enough, never being Asian enough. Um, so we just wanted to prepare him by making sure that he had a plenty of self love and plenty of connection to uh, his culture so that any questions, about who he was, uh, who he is as a person, um, that he can just, you know, shut that down really quick. Yeah, yeah. I, I asked for, like, a, a list of questions from my audience as to, you know, what, what concerns they have when they're raising their own, like, children, half-Asian children. And one of them was saying, uh, there's, like, two parts, like, right, like the, the bullying from, like, the mainstream society and then bullying in, like, the Asian community. Um, and so um, one question I think was from Allison was saying like, oh, my, my biggest child is going through this phase where she's like, I think it was a he saying like, oh, you know, my eyes aren't pretty. Like, you know, my hair is ugly. How do I, you know, get light eyes like everyone else? And that just hits you in the feels, right? Like your, your, your child is comparing themselves to everyone and feeling inferior, right? Because Hollywood puts, you know, whiteness and, and beautiful blondes or like, you know, tall, dark and handsome, like white guys as the epitome of, you know, sexuality. So how would you as a mother, I mean, your, your, your son is still like under a year, year old, right? Months. Right. So it hasn't, you know, hit him, but eventually he'll have to deal with that. Like, how do you as a mother and Randy, you know, how do you guys kind of strategize how to deal with that? I think as, um, because Randy is the male and my son is a male as well, I think it's going to, that's a little different dynamic than having like a, a daughter, you know, or having a son where the mother is Asian and the right. father is, is Asian, is uh, white, because my son is always going to know that I am absolutely starstruck by his father. You know, I, I think that Randy is probably the best looking person I've ever seen <laughs> in the world, um, honestly. So there personally I don't see that coming up if it did I mean it would break my heart you know the only thing I can do is just reassure him that I am the one that chased after his father pretty hard so there's going to be some women out there uh that are going to appreciate him uh for for what he looks like um if he has half the looks his dad does I'll be like you know don't worry yeah. about it son <laughs> well we, we're both a good looking couple but um that's the thing about the media and Hollywood how insidious it is what yeah, you were saying it's it's very different when you have an Asian mother, especially an Asian mother that does a you know I I date white because X Y Z. I like oh Asian men look like my brother, Asian men look my dad. Like you know that's yeah. just internalized racism. And so well, I, remember, I could say same thing. I could say oh that white guy looks like my dad. You know like yeah. but I don't because right right not you, you're not like sorry. that kind of you know inter, internalized racism. 
But I remember in the article with Zachary Schwartz, who's Hapa in the Playboy article, he was talking about like how his dad is Jewish, and he was, you know, just had a more difficult time dating because everyone kind of looked at him and he's a little bit foreign. I remember in the article how he was saying like, in the back of the car, just crying to his father that he wasn't going to be able to date. He wasn't, like, girls didn't find him attractive. And I, I remember Zach telling me, like, you know, his dad's a great guy, but he just doesn't really understand the racism, right, that, that you know, his son faces. In, in your case, you know, you, you are very aware, maybe not all the politics, but, like, you're aware of all the different dynamics that go on in the community and how it could affect your son. I am, and as well as him being a boy, I'm able to assure him that, son, you will find a girl that likes you because your dad, look at your dad, he's extremely <laughs> Asian looking, and I definitely was, uh, yeah. you know, facing after him, so. Yeah, and you, and you personally know me, too, so I can always... <laughs> exactly. Um, My, he can always uh, get one, snag one of those boot camp spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll comp him, you know, talk to Uncle JT. Um... Now, on the other side, you have, like, the Asian bullying. Now, mm -hmm. another question, um, I think this applied to a, a daughter, where she, I think, again, it was um, Alice or something, was asking how, like, she sends her daughter to, like, I guess, Mandarin school, and she's mm -hmm. picking up the fact that everyone is, like, skinnier than her, so she's, like, kind of, like, stopped eating, right? So yeah. You know, you don't have a daughter, and so you're not necessarily dealing with that. But the entire top issue of, like, Asian on Asian or Asian on half of bullying, like, what are the concerns that you have about that? Um, Asian on half of bullying, like, what I'm concerned that will happen with Zozo is yeah. Yeah. My, my the biggest thing is the language. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, in a lot of... Um, cultural groups not knowing the language is uh is seen as like oh are you really xyz you know are you really puerto rican are you really filipino are you really chinese if you don't speak the language um and so with he will have more of a disadvantage not looking full chinese you know it's it's easy to say oh yeah i'm chinese when you look chinese mm -hmm. but if you don't look you know if, if somebody says oh well, you don't really look chinese if he can bust out you know some good mandarin and just you know wipe the floor with them then I think that uh, I just equipping him with uh, all the tools he needs to understand his culture from an early age. You know, we're going to Taiwan. Uh, we plan to spend a, a good amount of time there. We'd like to spend at least six to eight months there um, uninterrupted so that he can be fully immersed in the culture. You know, he goes to his grandparents, his nai nai ye ye. He goes over there probably two, three times a week to, to practice Chinese and He's going to start Mandarin school as soon as he is 18 months. Randy only speaks Chinese to him, mm -hmm. uh, just things like that. Just every every aspect that we can, we we try to we try to you know play Chinese music. He only watches Chinese TV if he watches TV. I don't let him watch TV. Um, <laughs> but uh, and then food as well. He only he eats pretty um, pretty traditional, I guess. Not not I'm not finding his food at Whole Foods. Is what right. you know he's. So. No, no to trade address for him. Okay. Um, so it sounds like your approach to, to that is to really be part of the Asian side of his heritage, mm -hmm. to not yeah. ignore it like, you know, like some families do, where they treat like, oh, you know, he's half white, so he's white. I, Say that again? Yeah. Because he looks, sorry, he, he looks, he's going to look Chinese. Yeah. You, he can't ignore it. So he just has to embrace it. Right. And you as a mother, you... So the steps I hear that you've taken is like, um, like you're slowly learning Mandarin. You're, you you've learned how to cook Chinese food. You're understanding like Asian kind of culture and history, and you're going to Asia, right? So you yourself, you stepped into the Asian world instead of just assuming like, hey, Randy has to be part of my kind of like mainstream world. And it, you know, it was kind of an accident. Like I didn't mean to. I, I never like. I never went out of my way to try, I, but I mean, I've been Buddhist since I was very young. My father, he's Buddhist, um, so that that right there was an instant connection, at least with his family, because they're Buddhist. Um, so we we've, we've got that really important tie going on, just very naturally, and then the rest I just kind of fell in. I mean, how can you not love really delicious home cooking? You know, like 
when that's, you know, I want to recreate that. So I learned how, you know, I, I love Asia. There's, I don't think there's anywhere more beautiful. Uh, so we go there, you know, at least once a year. Um, and I just, I don't really see it as me trying to do, it's just really awesome. And it's just right. how I like but my it, life. You know, it, it, I think it's, it's really great and a very enlightened point of view because I know that there are um, relationships where it is culturally very one-sided. So definitely for like, you know, my audience is, I, I, like when I'm on dates with women, I'll do things where I'll pull the woman into my culture, right? And I was like, I say like, hey, be proud, you know, that you're Asian, be successful because you're Asian, not in spite of it. Um, right. I actually put out that meme and like a, a, a mom actually said that she screenshotted that phrase from my Facebook, right? And she put it into a scrapbook of other Asian men who are like famous and empowering? Like, w other than Randy, okay, like, what kind of role models do you think you know Zozo will have growing up that you can point to? Uh, I plan to not really emphasize the race thing. Mm -hmm. um, there obviously there are plenty. Obviously, he's named sort of after Jay Chow, so it would be ideal if you really love Jay Chow like me and his father do and could idolize uh, him as he is, I mean, a genius. So, but I mean, he's going to have talents, you know, we plan on putting him in chess, we plan on putting him in piano, so hopefully he'll find some, uh, some uh, role models in his, like, wheelhouse, you know, mm -hmm. of stuff that he likes. Uh, I, I don't know who they will be as of now, but uh, I just... I, I want him to not really think about race. I mean, I know that you're, part of your thing is like, yes, you know, be conscious of it. Ideally, I hope that it just never really is an issue for him yeah. and that he can just go around and just be Zozo. Right, so, right. I, I think in an ideal world, like I've had students where to them it never really occurred to them. And the reason they take the boot camp is simply just to learn the tactics and the strategies. But race was never a factor. But on the other hand, I've had like a lot of students where, you know, you're in Texas, you're in Dallas, right? And like I grew up in Dallas where I got called gook and chink all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's great that Randy didn't encounter that, but I, I tend to think that's a bit more on the rare side, to be honest. He, he did. He just kind of let it. And I think that's another one of my emphasis is on Zozo is making sure that he's able to just let things go because there is negativity in the world and you can't change anyone's mind. Like it, it would be nice. And, and you are doing a really wonderful job at breaking, you know, stereotypes, but not everybody can. And so I just want Zozo to realize like there will be negativity. And at some point you just have to pick your battles, you know, don't, yeah. don't be getting upset. Don't be letting people that call you, you know, Jackie Chan or, you know, don't, don't let it get to you. Just move on because eventually, uh, he will be hiring those people for his business. So. Yes, yes, yeah, the uh, the prodigy. Um, right. So this has been some great stuff. Um, now, before I let you go, like, what advice, just general parenting advice, do you have for like you know my guys that have, have you know they've gotten married now, they're, they're they're happy, maybe they're dating like a beautiful black woman, white woman, Latina. And they're thinking about starting a family, right? And when, what last piece of advice would you have for that guy that's like, you know, contemplating starting a family and like the issues that he's gonna uh, have to go through raising his, you know, son or daughter? I would be sure to let them know that um, culture is very important and it's not something that you can ignore. Um, so just make sure that you're both on the same page before you get into a situation where you can no longer back out like having a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, me and Randy, we had a great relationship and we, um, we bond on every level, you know, religious, spirituality, like health, um, our, just our political, everything is just very aligned with each other and we don't have any, we don't have any, um, we don't have to tackle any tough issues anymore. We've already got the tough issues rolled out. Now all we have to do is just worry about getting through day to day, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's laundry done. Yeah. Oh, I don't have time. You know, that don't don't save the philosophical stuff for later. Get it rolled out of the way, especially when you're coming from two different cultures. Uh, it can be it can be a lot if you're not already just on the same page. Great, great. Um, 
you know what? I think that a lot of Hapas that are, that are watching this wish they had like a mother that was as enlightened as you because in the entire like kind of Hapa sphere from Reddit and all that there is a lot of frustration and anger that they weren't raised aware of themselves so I'm very happy that your your son Jojo is is going to be um, raised with confidence and integrated with culture and hopefully not have the internalized racism that so many of us whether we're Asian or half Asian um, go through so all right guys so before I let you go Brooke how can our audience find more about you and maybe you know see your life uh, maybe you give like parenting tips how can they find more about you uh, I do all that on my Instagram it is at kitty in a boot k-i-t-t-y <laughs> kitty not i-e so I'll put it in the, the video as well as the description box so check her out all right thanks so much Brooke bye bye thanks bye bye Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.